why you should forget about perfection, coming up. Hey guys, how's it going? Here with indie game dev tip number seven. Why you should forget about perfection. Um, perfection, when it comes to development of any product, but especially games, uh, typically is, is a bit of a death knell when it comes to these things. Um, and it can, it, it can apply to a lot of things outside of game development, but for game development especially, um, it's it's really not a good idea to be a perfectionist when it comes to these things, uh, especially if you're working on a game by yourself. So there's a couple reasons for that. Um, first off, a lot of times you can get hung up on trying to make that one asset perfect or that one animation perfect. Um, and you get so hung up on that that maybe it takes you uh, five to 10 times longer just to generate that one asset because you're trying to polish and, and iterate and polish and polish and polish and make that one thing so perfect that you're not actually um, spending time getting the rest of the game up and running. So um, you might wind up being in a situation where, um, you know, 90% of your dev time has been spent trying to make 10% of the game um, super polished and, and, um, and perfect. And then you realize, oh crap, you know, I've spent uh, a couple of months on this game and I haven't really gotten anywhere because, um, you know, it took me so long to get where I'm at. So, you know, it increases the, the length of time that's required and the effort that's required in order to make your game significantly um, just by trying to make everything perfect. Um, so the idea is to go with a little bit higher than good enough at first. So um, good enough just means that you're basically accepting where you're at, um, that what you're putting out is good enough to be passable, but that's about it. Um, the idea is to shoot a little bit higher than that, uh, but not too much, uh, at least until you, you actually finish the game. And by finish, I mean uh, you've got the game feature complete. It's in a feature complete state and it's ready to be, be testing. Um, <sighs> Excuse me. Um, by by feature complete, I mean uh, the game is in a state where it's testable, um, and and you can really begin the polish phase. And the polish phase is maybe where you make some of those last minute tweaks and adjustments. Um, but that should really be towards the end of the game development cycle because, um, well, because of my next point that I'm actually going to bring up is that uh, spending too much time being a perfectionist, especially early on in the cycle. Um, can really wind up sucking when something um, that you've spent so much time on has to be changed or thrown out because of some unforeseen um, circumstance in game development. So games, uh, as they're being developed, change a lot, especially if you're the only one working on the project. Um, now, I know uh, part of the problem that I have is uh, I don't necessarily plan completely um, what I'm gonna do. It's not that I don't plan at all, but I don't plan in great detail as you would um, in a scenario where you're working uh, in a, in a full-fledged studio. Like when I'm at work, uh, a lot of that stuff is 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 very well planned out in advance, and um, you know there's UML that's that's written up, um, and and design discussions are had, and meetings upon meetings about how we're going to approach something. So by the time we actually get to the execution, um, we already know the direction that we're going to go. In a um, in an independent uh, per game developer's perspective, you don't really have that. Um, you might wind up bouncing a couple things off of the guys on your team, uh, or if you're, you're working solo, maybe you'll bounce some things off some friends, maybe. Um, but you generally have an idea of the direction you kind of want to go, but you don't really have uh, a full-fledged plan. And so um, what can happen is you might get halfway through the game development cycle and realize, you know, this feature doesn't really work the way that I thought it would, and it needs to change. And if you spend a lot of time polishing those things too early or trying to be uh, a perfectionist about it, uh, that's a whole lot of work that may never see the light of day. Um, and so, you know, it's it really winds up being a, a wasted effort um, on some level. And you really 
obviously you don't want to waste effort because um, games already require enough effort as it is to develop because there's so many things going on. You've got the graphics and you've got um, the engine to worry about and you've got the um, timings and you've got animations and, um, and sounds and, and I think I already, yeah. So uh, you, you've already got just so many things that you already have to worry about that um, you really don't have time to be a perfectionist. Um, so I guess that sort of brings me to my next point is that perfectionist, perfectionism takes a lot of time. And as an independent game developer, especially if you work um, you know, a full-time job like I do, uh, you're not gonna have the time to be a perfectionist. Um, your, your projects are typically done either in your spare time or you schedule out um, you know, a couple of, of hours a week to work on something, um, you know, whatever project it is that you have, you have going. And just being a perfectionist, you're, you're typically not going to achieve as much um, in those blocks of time that you have to work as you would otherwise if you, if you were doing, you know, just above good enough. So avoid perfectionism and go with the level just above good enough. Uh, so that's really all I've got um, on that. So uh, please like the video. Please subscribe. I, I really need those likes and subscribes. Um, I'm going to keep these dev tips coming. But uh, yeah, so um, until next time, I will see you guys. Tomorrow.